How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today as part of my advanced finance series of videos, we're going to talk about minimizing the total cost of ownership. Now we might wonder why we want to minimize costs. It's really to increase net worth. But why do we want to increase net worth? There's a lot of reasons why you want to do that. And you can probably think of a few reasons, but I won't get into that in this video because it's a pretty big topic. It's kind of philosophical as well. So I won't get into that. And we're just going to talk about minimizing the total cost of ownership. You can think of every time when you buy something, you're taking a piece of net worth and which is cash or whatever and you're taking it in exchange for a good or a product after you receive this thing this thing can go up in value stay the same or decrease but most likely whenever you buy something it completely vanishes if you get a service after you take the service the value that you paid for completely vanishes it goes to zero but if you buy an item, a lot of times it would depreciate uh, very steeply at first and then kind of taper off. However, if you buy the right item, it would actually appreciate. Most people actually won't be able to buy anything that appreciates. It's kind of rare, but if you have a good eye for it, you can actually buy stuff that appreciates. So here's your total cost equation. It's not really an equation because it's so simple. It's just total cost is really what you buy for the item minus what you sold it for. A lot of times people won't even sell the item they buy it. Like for example, you buy a phone, you use it until the value depreciates to zero, and then you maybe you just throw it away, you donate it or something, you recycle it. The actual price that you pay for is actually your purchase price. A lot of people look at it this way. Whenever you go to the store to buy something, you go, oh, okay, I have this much. I'm gonna pay that much for it and you, you look at it as okay you pay that much it'll never come back but a good way to think of buying stuff is when you look at the item you want to look at how much you will actually get back later on after you use it now how do you minimize the total cost here you can either maximize the sold price or minimize the buy price you can minimize the buy price either by getting stuff on a really good sale or you can actually buy something used after all the depreciation happens so that when you are holding it, it's kind of like a hot potato. When you're holding on to it, you don't want it to depreciate while you're holding on to it. So you want to decrease that and then when, when you're selling it, you want to get as high a price as possible. This video is about this uh, recycling method where you want to minimize your total cost of ownership. Therefore, it means that you need to think of your purchase as as a buy at some point and then sell at some point. So you need to get good at being able to sell the stuff that you actually buy. A lot of people just accumulate stuff. They buy stuff and then they fill their whole house with stuff that um, they don't even use. You would end up buying a lot of stuff and then you, you want this gadget and then you move on to the next gadget. But what happens to a previous gadget? You just kind of toss it aside. It goes inside a box in your garage and you just accumulate, accumulate and then it really does, just doesn't go anywhere. So let me show you a few things I bought as an example. This is a Logitech UE900 pair of headphones. This retails for $400. I know, it's really expensive. And it has quad drivers, it sounds really good. I did AB comparison with, you know, like mediocre ones um, to this $400 one. Yeah, I can hear like maybe 5-10% difference in better clarity, but uh, you know, it is what it is and it's retails for $400. I paid actually $200 because I got them on sale. I bought actually three pairs of it. After selling two pairs, I paid back the total cost I paid for three pairs, so I really got this pair for free. Now, let's say I still bought it for $200. Right now, a used pair of this is $150. Generally, when you sell stuff like this, you take off about 15% in transaction costs. You know, whatever website you're using, you need to pay, you know, a certain amount, um, you know, PayPal fees or whatever. So you just kind of estimate about 15%. So I don't know, $150 is really $130 by the time it goes into my bank account. So if I pay $200 for these at a really good sale, and I still can sell them for $130 used, which means uh, my ownership of these for you know two three years cost me seventy dollars um not too bad um it will be pretty bad if you bought these at four hundred dollars and never did any uh selling of or of any sort 
and you use it until it's dead and then maybe you cast it aside because you got another new pair then that would actually cost you $400 total for, for you know these pair of headphones. Another example I want to go through is this CX-10. I've actually reviewed this uh, little quadcopter. To me, this thing is a very good platform to learn how to fly on and after flying this and knowing how to fly, I kind of don't have such an urge to buy the $1,000 one. So this thing cost me $18. These things are worth nothing uh, used because you tend to crash them and stuff. So people don't want to buy used. I don't want to buy a used one of these because someone crashed it. And so $18, uh, full full depreciation of this, but I can still use it. This, this is still functional. It's a low price compared to uh, buying a expensive uh, $1,000 one. To me, the fun aspect of it, yeah, it's not quite the same. Maybe I imagine like 60 to 80% because you can't take videos and stuff on this particular one. It kind of got the itch out of me to play with quadcopters. Another thing about co total cost of ownership, which I see this kind of fitting, it's uh, this Essays of Warren Buffett book. It's just a collection of a bunch of uh, newsletters that Warren Buffett sent out to his shareholders, um, put in like a orderly fashion. And this book actually cost me $9. Uh, used and I paid four dollars for shipping so it's a total cost of thirteen dollars when I bought it and I just checked right now when you buy a used one of these it actually costs sixteen dollars and another four dollar of shipping so it's actually twenty dollars now and so you can imagine if I bought this for thirteen and then now I sold this for twenty if I deduct the shipping and handling and the transaction cost I probably paid nothing for this book just just because this book happened to appreciate a couple dollars while I had it. Pretty good to read a free book. So you probably have too much stuff. I have too much stuff. I look around here, there's a lot of random stuff that I don't really need. And yes, I'm, I personally am working on selling a lot of the stuff that I don't actively use every day. So it's a good way to kind of redeem the value inside all the idle stuff that's sitting there. Um, it does take some work because you need to, you know, list them, sell it. But then once you do, you can kind of harvest all the value in this idling goods that's sitting there and then you can take it and invest it. Some people really like collecting DVDs or Blu-rays. And so when you collect a lot of them, it could cost you thousands of dollars and it's just sitting there depreciating. And we all know that DVDs mostly right now um, are pretty much worthless. They're not worth very much compared to because everyone wants Blu-rays now. Personally for me, I don't really like watching DVDs more than once unless it's a really, really good movie. I might watch it two times, maximum three times. Maybe like the Star Wars one I might have watched two or three times only. Any other DVDs, if I watch it more than once, I get really bored because I kind of like, oh yeah, I know what happens. But yes, if there are classic ones that you find yourself watching, yeah, maybe you can, you can want to collect a few DVDs, but you know, certainly having like a huge bookcase worth of it. It's a lot of capital tied up in a depreciating asset. Can you imagine if you sold all the stuff that's just hanging around that you don't need? I'm sure you can get like a thousand dollars or more out of all these things that you actually don't use. It's easy to say because when you go to it and you actually say, oh, I wanna sell this, you might have some attachment to it. One easy way to motivate yourself to get rid of that stuff is to have something in mind that you actually want. Of course, you don't want to put it into some other depreciating asset. You want something that you actually need and you know, you've know you been looking at for quite a while. I don't know, like a, like a KitchenAid blender or something. And you can say, okay, if I sell you know these 10 items, then I can buy that thing in exchange for that because it would be actually exchanging all these goods that you don't need for something that you actually do need and you actually have to work towards it. So, you know, it's, it's a good way to um, help you get rid of the stuff that you don't need. This whole video is about letting you know that you can actually recycle your goods. You buy it, you sell it. And so you need to know how to sell your goods. There's various ways to do it. You can, um, you should open up an account on eBay to sell stuff. You should open up an account on Amazon. You can sell stuff on there too. For really big and heavy stuff that is maybe less than $100 you want to sell on Craigslist, 
there are apps you can use called um, Close 5 or Let Go, which does not collect any fees, just like Craigslist, but you have to deal with um, uh, meeting people and stuff. So there's some danger there. Make sure you, you know, meet at a public space, uh, do it in the daytime, etc. Uh, when you use those uh, applications or uh, Craigslist. You don't just open up an eBay or Amazon account. You actually need a PayPal account to receive it. Most people already have that, but if you don't have those already, it's kind of daunting because you gotta do all these little things in order to get it set up. But once it's set up, it's really easy. You just gotta get good at knowing how to sell your stuff, your old stuff. So the other thing is be very flexible with the delivery services, you should be able to use FedEx, UPS, USPS, because each one of those has their good points. And if you're able to go to all of them, it's more uh, variety for you and more options for you when you ship something. So you wanna figure out all the outlets, the drop-off locations and stuff for UPS, FedEx, USPS uh, that are closest to you or maybe closest to your work so that you can, uh, after you package all this stuff up, you can send it through those outlets. Generally, FedEx and UPS, they ship heavier stuff. Um, they're cheaper when you ship heavier stuff. Something like this big or smaller, you wanna ship uh, USPS, this big and light, maybe like two pounds or lighter. You wanna do USPS, it's gonna be cheaper. Uh, but if it's bigger than something like yay big and kind of heavy, do it on USPS and FedEx. That's my experience from shipping a whole lot of stuff. So the last thing you need to know about selling all this stuff is that, you know, when you buy all this stuff from Amazon, keep the boxes because the boxes you should not recycle. You recycle them by sending stuff that you don't want away in the box itself because then you don't have to buy the box. You don't have to buy all these packing materials. So whatever you want to sell, you should shove it in there, right? You uh, close it with your packing tape. Uh, sometimes you need to measure the dimensions of your box. So you just go measure, measure, X, Y, Z, measure it all, and then weigh the thing and figure out how heavy it is to figure out the price because you really don't want to go to the store and ship it because it's really, really slow when you stand in line. You don't want to stand in line. You want to print out the label prepaid already, slap it on there, and then you just drop the box off at whatever drop off location, USPS, whatever. Um, I have one of these digital scales, I bought this. Um, it can weigh up to, I think like two pounds or something. But if you have something heavier, you can use your digital scale uh, that you weigh yourself in. What you do is you weigh yourself first, note how, how much you weigh. You carry the box, that's kind of heavy, more than two pounds. 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, doesn't matter. You just carry it and then you stand on the weight thing and you know you just subtract your weight from the new weight and you get the, the heavy weight that you need in order to plug into the either Amazon or eBay. And then with that, you can print your postage, slap it on and uh, there you go, off, off you go. Uh, you send it in and you get paid. So I hope this helps you think about the total cost of ownership of stuff. Whenever you buy something, um, you should think about how much is it gonna cost you to own that for whatever length of time that you think you're gonna use it. If you're gonna use it for a really long time, maybe you wanna buy it brand new, I don't know. It depends on the item for me, certainly. This is Beat the Bush. I hope this video helps you think about how to lower your total cost of ownership of practically anything. Don't forget to give me a like over here, comment down below if you have a question about any of this, and don't forget to subscribe over here. Thanks for watching.